Hey, this is OXDF, and today is just a super quick video inspired by the forgot box from Hack the Box, where we're just going to look for a vulnerability. We, we, we know of a vulnerability in TensorFlow, and we just want to see exactly what's happening in the source. And so we are going to um, kind of navigate our way through GitHub and find the source and see the, where the vulnerability was, see the history of where it got fixed and what they did to fix it. And uh, I know when you're new to security, um, GitHub and large open source projects can be kind of intimidating. So I just wanted to show some of the strategies I use for searching through um, in a quick video. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the scenario in this case is that we have a machine learning model that is in a Python script that is looking at some user input and giving it a score based on if it thinks it's cross-site scripting or not. And if it's a high fun if it's a high rating, it passes the input to this function called preprocess input expression arg string. And so we're going to start by Googling that because we want to figure out what it does. And what's interesting is when I Google that, um, I expect usually to actually get the source, get some access to the source. Um, but here I've got code injection, code injection, remote code execution, uh, vulnerable version of TensorFlow. So clearly I've stumbled across something here. Um, we can take a look at this one, for example, in a new tab. And we can see, make this a little bigger, um, you know, th there's a, in the save mode CLI tool, there's vulnerable code injection. Um, in fact, they show the certain code path to safe execution here, where it's in the preprocess input expression arg string. That's our function. Um, and right down here, there's an eval of expression, which is, uh, I believe, what's passed in somewhere. Um, well, but we want to, but that's not even totally clear. Like, we want to check that out. We want to find the source and take a look. Um, they actually give us a POC right here, and like for the sake of solving the box we're working on this, we, we're, we're way down beyond what we need to do. Um, but we want to look at this, and we want to make uh, GitHub not so intimidating. So um, let's go ahead and take figure out how we can find this code. Now, for one, I didn't actually realize this until um, just a few minutes ago when I was starting to record this video. Uh, there's actually a link to it right down here. We can, but that's like well, we won't let's we won't go that way. Let's let's show some other ways to find the code. Um, one way we can do is come back here and say like we're getting all this stuff with like. Uh, exploits here. Let's just do minus like minus CV, which means show me searches with this thing, but then don't include them if they say CVE in them. And that should get rid of all of our vulnerability type stuff. And right away we get um, you know, here's save, you know, TensorFlow, save model, model CLI test.py. We can check that out. And within here, we'll just do a search for control F. You can see them up here at the top here, pre-process input exp and so here we go here we actually see it getting called um we go back to the it only shows up twice and i just looked at them but you know if we do def and then that we aren't getting it because it's not defined in here um that makes sense actually if we go up to the top we're actually looking at uh save model cli test.py so this is the function that is running the test to make sure it's working as expected um so it's calling this fun thing but it's not doing it it's actually so this function is from the save model CLI, which we saw in the uh, advisory as well. Uh, we can go back to the top here and see that that is imported right here. So it's import from TensorFlow Python tools, import save model CLI. Um, we're already in TensorFlow Python tools. So let's just go back up here and we can go to save model CLI. And in there we can do the same control F and this time we've got the def. So we can see this is gonna parse an input arg into a dictionary that maps input key to a Python expression. Um, I don't totally understand what that means, but we can actually look at the code. Um, we can see what's going on here. Um, let's see, so we have eval expression, and expression comes from the raw input is splitting. So whatever's passed in with an equal sign, whatever comes, it's going to split once on the equal sign and then get the key and then the expression, and it's going to eval that expression if safe is false. Um, and that comes back to this error. Um, Let's say this is the current version of the code. It doesn't look like it's actually even patched. So I'm kind of curious what's going on here. Um, let's go back up to the top here and see if we can find the vulnerable version or what the, the vulnerability at least. We can click on this history button here at the top. And with the history button, we can scroll down. Um, this advisory is dated May 17th, 2022. Let's go back here, uh, August, July, March. Okay. so. And I'll always do safe parsing. That's interesting. So let's check this one out. We'll click on here. Um, and now we're getting sort of the diff between um, before this commit and after. And so we can see, what do they do? 
Well, within Save Model CLI, when they call preprocess input art input expression arg string, they used to pass safe equals false. Now they do not. Um, now they just pass it in. Um, and so we can come back over. Oops, we aren't on this page anymore. Um, we can come here. Let's a new tab. Keep it. And well, that's yeah, not worth it going down the rabbit hole. But it basically, we can see they're they're taking away so that they call it when they call it from somewhere else in a different function. Um, that we're going to see it's going to be called uh, safely and not in the unsafe way. Um, if we expand this up, let's see. This is this is getting called from load inputs from arg load from load inputs from input arg string. Um, and again, there's a lot going on here, but we can just see that's the change they made. And then they actually took away a bunch of stuff here. These are tests, and then they no longer do need to do these tests because they're always going to do it safely. Um, we can also take one. The only other thing I want to take a quick look at is uh, back in here. This again. Back in here. Um, what does it do when it is safe? And you can, it's actually interesting. They do this AST literal eval in the expression as opposed to eval. Um, if we do AST dot literal eval versus eval, um, what is the difference? That's a, that's, uh, that was my first question. If we click on this, we, we can get a stack overflow, um, bright white. Um, so AST literal eval only considers a small subset of Python syntax to be valid. Um, got literal structures such as strings, bytes, numbers, tuples, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's just going to raise an error if you try to like import OS and call system. So it's the safe way to not allow execution. The one other thing I wanted to show you, um, another way to find this code. Let's say instead of doing the minus CVE trick, we do um, GitHub, TensorFlow, and just, just get the repo. Um, and we come here. So now we're going to be at the top of the repo. Um, but we don't know, we want to find our function, right? So if we come up here, we can do it in the, at the top. We can do pre-process input express. Uh, this is where I better find the, where do we have that handy? Um, pre-process input exprs arg string. We put that in here and search in this repository. We're going to get back where this is called. So there's four results. So we can see it's in this in this TSF, TFSA 2021 advisory. Um, another one here we have it in save model.py with a def in front of it. So that is definitely that we can see where it's being defined. Um, and then it's being called in the test as well. So we can click here. And that's just another way to get, you know, when you're within a with you're in a, within a repo and you want to find a certain function or whatever, using the search here is really quite handy. With that, I'm going to call it. Um, thanks for sticking in with me today, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.